All right. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've, I've got a word that I, I believe is for our community today when faith remembers. Thank you, Lord. Could I have that little thing called mobile phone? Yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have all the gadgets on the... Um, on, 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 on the lectern, we uh, we we have we have we have a chunk of scriptures to to read this morning. Um, I hope you are prepared. We're going to read this thing. <coughs> We're going to read this thing. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. All right. Um, First Samuel chapter seventeen, verse one. First Samuel chapter seventeen, verse one. Let, let, let me start. Let me go. Let me go. All right. It says, "Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Soko in Judah." They pitched, they pitched camp at Ephes, Ephes Demim, between Soko and Azekah. Saul and the Israelites <coughs> assembled and camped in the valley of Elah and drew up the battle lines to meet the Philistines. I, I, I don't like how this mic is behaving, how it sounds, how I'm sounding. I'm going to struggle, but we'll go through it. <coughs> um, all right. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with the valley between them. Okay, I want you to track with me as I, as I read this. Um, it says, a champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. I tried to look that up, and the only illustration I can give is if you look at, if you consider 31 courses of, um, <coughs> 31 course ceiling. So this guy was really tall. He was, he was huge. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of a scale of armor, bronze, weighing 5,000 shekels on his legs. He wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Man, this is intense. So Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle. Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, <laughs> we will become your subjects. But if, he, but if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and servants. Then the Philistines said, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. I, the power of words. You see, words have the power to either encourage you or intimidate you. One text message is enough to mess your whole day. Just one from that person. Just one email. May you read that thing from start to finish. And you're depleted, and you're defeated, and you're deflated. You're done. Out for the count of words. That's how powerful words are. And so this, 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 oh, I'm not going to call him this demon, but this character, Goliath, knew exactly what he was doing. And his intent and his purpose, his mission, was to intimidate the Israelites. 
Then it says in verse 12 that now David was the son of an Ephrathite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons, and in Saul's time, he was very old. Jesse's three sons had followed Saul to, to the war. The firstborn was Eliab, the second Abinadab, and the third Shama. David was the youngest. The three oldest uh, followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Ah, uh, yes. For 40 days, the Philistine came forward. Every day, man, this guy just came. Every morning and evening, morning and evening, he would come and he would just speak these intimidating words. Every day, every day, every day, instilling fear. Instilling fear. Because that's what, that's what bullies do. It's, it's not so much, young people, it's not so much that, um, you know, oh no, I'll get you at home time. Uh, it, it's not a fight that happens after school that really, you know, it's the words. You know, you get the words run about recess time that you're going to be taken care of at the end of the day. And the whole day in class, you're paralyzed. You're paralyzed. Intimidated. Fear, because that's what the enemy does. So twice a day. It's almost like he was serving them, you know, breakfast and, and, and dinner. And the menu was fear. <laughs> fear in the morning. <laughs> Roasted fear in the evening. <laughs> Grilled fear the next <laughs> day. He just kept giving them this diet of fear because he wanted to crush their spirit. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. The whole point of, of, of fear is to crush your spirit. All right, we're driving through this whole thing. We're driving through. We'll get to a certain place where we'll pull over and I'll park. And you see that uh, at that point I'll start preaching. Now we're just driving through. So now, now Jesse say to, 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 to David, take this effort of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to the camp. Take along ten cheeses mm -hmm. to the commander of the unit. See how your brothers are and bring me, bring back some assurance from them. And this is a concerned father. And they are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. Yeah, but are they, are they really fighting? <laughs> are they fighting? Now they're positioned to fight, but are they really fighting? You know, they, they, they keep getting intimidated anyway. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of the shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. Young people, being faithful in little things, being faithful in what would appear to be the mundane is what sets you up to a life of victory yeah. and prominence. Yeah. Just the little. Yeah. Just, just turning up at 7 a.m. Just, just to set up. No one sees what you've done or how you're doing it. Or you facilitate a service like this. Just faithfully just turning up and doing in the unseen, unnoticeable, the mundane. Because you see, the, 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 the miracle, the power and the breakthrough is, is in the mundane. So David left his, his things with the keeper of the supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath the Philistine champion from Gath stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance and David heard it. When the Israelites saw the man, when the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. In great fear. Okay. 
Now the Israelites have been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. All right, sounds good. So David asked the man standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Okay. Whilst I've been in obscurity, I've been encountering God. Whilst no one took notice of me, God took notice of me. I've been engaging with God in privacy. I can. All right. So then, of course, you know, the brothers, the brothers, siblings, uh, the siblings. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him. Like, seriously? Oh, and I said, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down to watch the battle. Mm-hmm. Chill, bro. Now what have I done? Can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. And the man answered him. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul and Saul sent for him. Okay, 32. <laughs> David, David said to Saul, let no one, <laughs> listen to this, let no one lose heart on the account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Faith remembers that's what we are trying to sort of wrap up this message with. We're trying to wrap it up with, with that. That's the wrapper. Faith remembers. It's cooking. Faith remembers. All right. Now, then, then Saul said, Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man. And he's been a warrior from his youth. If what you see, if what you are looking at is all you are seeing, then you are seeing very little. Sila. If all you're seeing is what you're looking at, then you're not seeing the totality. Of the fullness of reality. What you are facing, what you are looking at, is only a small percentage. And now when you realize that there's a greater reality, oh, I'm getting excited. And when I get excited, I become passionate. When I, become, I begin to sweet and, and, and then I lose track of time. Okay, contain myself, contain myself. Okay, all right, let's get back, let's get back. Okay. But David said to Saul, here it is. Faith remembers. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock. Oh, this is what I did. Oh, this is what I did. I went after it. I struck it. I rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Okay. So the point David is trying to make is I have fought some secret battles. And I, by the grace and the power of God, have overcome. Uh Uh-huh. 
Uh huh. Okay. So now you 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 just see me uh, as I am, but you don't know the battles that I've faced. You don't know the challenges that I've overcome. You don't know the encounters I've had with God. It's in the mundane. It's in the obscurity. It's in those moments when no one even recognizes you. It's in those moments that God works on you. Oh, in case somebody, somebody thought I forgot. No, I didn't forget. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. It's the entrance of your word into our hearts that brings light and gives us understanding. Lord, as I endeavor to communicate what you've laid on my heart, I pray that it will be under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. I yield myself to you now that you would superintend over this whole thing, O oh God. Lord, I thank you. Let this word be broken. Let the breaking of the bread be apportioned, uh, you know, accordingly, according to the needs of your sons and your daughters today, O oh Lord. I thank you in the name of Jesus that everyone is going to receive receive a peace that they will take with them that will nourish them and strengthen them in the name of Jesus we thank you and we give you praise because we know this one thing that you are faithful and faith remembers we pray this in Jesus name amen okay so this is what I've been through it says your servant has killed both the lion and the bear this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord God, uh, the, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Faith remembers. Faith remembers. When you walk with God, when you encounter God's faithfulness, when you encounter God's goodness, there's something that is engraved on your heart. There's a scripture in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It's a very, very familiar portion of scripture. And it's the, it's the, I guess it's the working definition of faith. It says, now faith is a substance of things hopeful. Mm -hmm. The evidence of things not seen. The, the, the New King James says, for, uh, the new, 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 that, that's, that's the uh, that, that's actually New King James. The NIV says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance, assurance about what we do not see. Faith is confidence. Faith is, faith is, uh, you got to work with me. Uh, I, you know, I, I just have nine minutes, so come on. Faith is confidence in what we hope for. And it's assurance about what? About what we do not see. So confidence in what we hope for. Confidence for what we hope for. And assurance for what we do not see. That sounds contradictory. How can I have assurance for what I do not see? I thought I needed to see it in order for me to have assurance. You see, the kingdom of God is a kingdom that operates in sort of in an inverted way. Everything is reversed. In, in the world, that's why we come up with phrases like a seeing is... Uh -huh, come on now. But in the kingdom of God, believing is seeing. It's believing that leads you to seeing. When you believe, when you have the confident assurance that the one who promised, the one who spoke it, is capable to bring it into manifestation, then as you hold on to that assurance in the process of holding on to his word, because the one who promised is faithful in the process of you holding on. Then you see it. Because it's confidence in what you hope for. And it's assurance 
about what you do not see. So the Israelites were intimidated. They were full of fear and they were paralyzed by fear because that's what fear does. Enter David. David comes in because David has had encounters with God. David has seen God's faithfulness. David has an anchor point in his faith journey. And, and so he has this point that he can anchor to, that he can go back to and say, you know what? I was in a state of hopelessness. I was beaten and I was out. I was down and out for the count. But the one that raised me up, the one that picked me up is God. And I remember too well how he delivered me. And so then what am I going, what am I going to do? As I face this giant as i encounter this problem that i've never encountered before i am not going to stand here and let this intimidate me i am going to tap into my memory faith remembers faith remembers And so your faith, dear friends, uh, needs to have an anchor point. Now, they say an anchor point is an integral part of a fall protection system and also a vital piece of equipment for anyone who works on roofs and other elevated surfaces. So it's the anchor point that keeps you safe. And your safety gear has got to be attached to an anchor point. So that in the event of a trip, of a fall, you are held, you're sustained. Come on now. Come on now. Because as you go through life, you'll be faced with different kinds of giants. Different kinds of situations that want to knock you out. That want to take you out. That want to completely obliterate you. Now you need to have that point of reference. Come on somebody. Faith remembers. You need to have that point that you tap into. Where you know that you know that you know. That was God. And if that was God then, guess what? Oh God, I'm calling upon you even right now. Because you see, you'll be faced with situations that, say, that will say to you, this, this is it. You're done. This is it. You're done. And every prognosis, every diagnosis, every report, everything will say, Sefini. Efinito. A capish. They'll say, they'll say you are done. But you need to have that anchor point within your spirit where you can tap into, where you can say, all right, I've tripped and I'm in free fall. And in free fall, it's crazy. It's like, ah! <laughs> free falling. You try, you, you try to clutch onto anything that you can find, but you're in free fall. Panic, fear, everything sets in. But before you go splat, the anchor point holds you. Come on now. Because you look back and you're like, God, I don't know how tomorrow is going to be. I don't know what's going to happen. But you know one thing I know, oh God, is that you are faithful. God, I, I have encountered you. I have seen you. I saw you come through in that situation. I know you will come through for me even now. Yeah. This is what David does. Your faith, brothers and sisters, needs to have a memory point. Muscle memory. They say muscle memory is a form of procedural memory that involves consolidating a specific motor task into memory through repetition. Which has been used synonymously with motor learning. So it's by repetition that you enhance your muscle memory. It's by repetition that you enhance your faith memory. Come on somebody. And the Bible says that faith comes by what? And hearing by the what? By the word of God. So as you constantly feed on the nutrition of the word of God, you are building your faith muscle. Come on, somebody. 
We have bec we we become a co you know a, a society that is that is more consumed with with the aesthetics and, and and appearances. And now we have you see back in the day, men used to have muscles from from the hard labor that they did. But now we have men that are just building muscles just for the sake of it, just for sure. For what? What's with that? Accumulating flesh and powers and powers of flesh. Like for what? Come on, bro. Like serious. What's that for? What, come on, somebody help me here. What, what's, the, what's the point? And and, and there's these all all these things, uh, you know, uh, supplement this or or protein this and that, just to accumulate piles and piles of of flesh for what? Anyhow, uh, that's just my observation, you know. But your faith then must be uh, must be nourished, and what nourishes your faith? is the word of God. What nourishes your faith is that awareness that you're walking with him. What nourishes your faith is the understanding that when God comes through for you, you don't attribute the success to a mere coincidence. Because that's how we sometimes, oh no, it was just a mere coincidence. I just happened to be here in the right place at the right time, talking to the right guy. No, that was divine intervention. Give God the glory, come on somebody. Give God the glory. Don't rob God of the glory. Because when you begin to behave like that, your faith won't have an anchor point. But you need to be a person that is constantly connected to what God is doing in your life and, 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 and creating these anchor points. Oh, that was God. If it wasn't for the Lord who came through for me there, I wouldn't have made it. That was God. That was God. That was God. You see me today? It's because of God. You see me now? It's because of the grace of God. I am who I am by the grace of God. I I take no credit for the man I've become. It is all by the grace of God. And so now when I face something that's very unfamiliar, what I do is instead of being intimidated, I remember. I remember. One of the things that I love to do is I love to fly a drone on the coastline send it up so high and just watch the coastline it's beautiful i'm not a very skilled pilot but what i tend to do is i fly in a setting called gps now in gps setting is when i launch the drone from here it locks in the gps positioning of that place it sets that up as the home point and when I release it, and I've sent it close to a, a kilometer that direction, and it's up 100 meters, and it's gone. If anything goes wrong, the return to home setting is activated. It will return and land in that exact spot that I launched it from. You need to have that as a child of God. After all the wanderings of the world, and the world says all these things to you and your neighbor and your uncle, you know that uncle that has an opinion over everything, and he says it, and he comes in with his expert knowledge that is unsolicited, and they say all these things, you need to have an anchor point that says, all right, I'm going to shut myself off from all this negative talk. I am going to return to my home setting, and in my home setting, I know God is faithful in my home setting i know it's not done in my home setting i know he is faithful in my home setting i know i'm not abandoned in my home setting i know he will come through yeah. Amen. Oh, you just know that you know you know that you know second corinthians chapter five seven five seven says for we walk by faith not by sight so we're not necessarily intimidated by what we see because that is not all that there is to see let me end with this this few points as the team comes comes for for to 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 to, to help me ministers we land this thing we walk by faith and not by sight but in order to walk by faith one must have courage in order for you to walk in faith and to walk by faith, 
it's going to require you to be courageous. Fear is a weapon of mass destruction against children of God. Fear is a weapon of mass destruction that the enemy uses against you as a child of God. He wants to paralyze you. He wants to rob you of your destiny. So fear fills the heart with hopelessness. That's what it does. Whereas faith, faith fills the heart with hope. And hope does not disappoint. So regardless of what you are faced with today, my encouragement to you is I want you to remember the faithfulness of God in your life. Because even when you were not aware of it, the hand of God was on your life. He sustained you and protected you even from danger you were not even aware of. It's easy for me to stand and pray for the breakthrough that I received. But it's equally important for me to pray and thank God for the accident that never happened. There was a crazy driver on the road one evening and I wasn't even aware of it. He was drunk and heavily intoxicated with all sorts of substances. And God protected me. God protected you. Thank God for the stuff that never happened. As much as we thank him for the stuff that happened that we saw in our lives. So regardless of what you're facing today, this is what I want to say to you. The same God who is send, sending us a message now. <clears throat> the same God who was with you in those moments, dear brothers and sisters, is the same God now. Just because what you're facing is something you've never faced before doesn't mean it's going to overtake you. So instead of gazing at it and feeling paralyzed, why don't you do what the songwriter says and turn your eyes onto Jesus and look fully in his wonderful eyes. And the things that you're faced with the challenges and the battles of this life will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Speak within yourself and say the same God that saw me through that will see me through this as well. And we forget, dear friends, sometimes that the biggest breakthrough or the biggest miracle is actually regeneration, conversion, salvation, being saved. And so if you're here and you've never made a commitment to the Lordship of Christ, you've never surrendered your life, this is a moment for you to be reflective this is a moment that we want to afford you to be able to commit your life to Jesus as Lord and Savior. So with every eye closed and every, every head bowed down, let's pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I turn away from my sin 
to acknowledge you as my Lord and my Savior. From this day onwards, I want to live for you. Now, they may just be short words, but it's the conviction of the heart. It's the believing in your heart and the confession of your mouth which activates this divine thing that God has put in place. This divine process that ushers you from the kingdom of darkness into light. This divine process that ushers you from death to life. And so if you've prayed this for the very first time, as we are still in this attitude of prayer, and you're here today, would you please... show by hand if you are saying Chin I've prayed it for the very first time this is my very first time that I've really made this commitment I want to give you this opportunity to lift your hand and the whole idea is so we would connect with you and journey with you and to you that are watching us online regardless of when you're going to watch this message if at the point of you watching it, you pray this prayer for the first time. Reach out, connect. We want to help you on this journey. Thank you, Lord. So the enemy uses fear, threats to intimidate us. But God uses his word. God uses his promises to instill faith in us. He encourages us. Instills courage into us to walk in what he has for us. Thank you, Lord, for this word. May it minister to your sons and daughters in Jesus' name. If there is anyone in need of prayer, we're here to pray with you and to pray for you.